Hi everyone and welcome to this video which is going to give you a very quick run through of natural hazards which can be used for the AQA Geography GCSE specification. Now first things first there's a number of natural hazards that you need to be able to identify for your exam. Now I would recommend knowing at least seven different natural hazards. These would be First one would be volcanic eruptions. There's my volcano, cross section of one. The second would be earthquakes. The third would be large storms, such as hurricanes and cyclones. The fourth would be those large waves known as a tsunami. There goes my large wave coming from the ocean. The next one could be a landslide. So if we've got a, a mountain, it's when a side of the mountain slides down. The next one could be flooding. So this could be river flooding. So there's my cross section of a river. And obviously if there's a heavy rainfall, for example, the water in the river could flood its banks and go onto the flood plain. And the last one would be drought. So if I draw some rain, obviously drought is a, a lack of rain. So there you go, there's your seven natural hazards, which I would recommend being aware of for your exam. So you've got volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, storms, such as hurricanes and cyclones. You've got tsunamis, which of course is generated by an underwater earthquake. You can have flooding, so river flooding. You've got landslides and drought. The next thing we're gonna look at is the difference between these two words. So we have a hazard and a disaster. Now, these seven hazards, which I've gone through, they only become a disaster when the population of that area is impacted. So once people are impacted by one of these natural hazards, that hazard then turns into a disaster. So if I was going to put that into a diagram format, we could have two circles here. Now this first circle is representing, shall we say, let's say a volcano. So there's our volcano and there's the population. Now, if this volcano erupted in an area where there was zero population and nobody was impacted by that volcanic eruption, so there's no connection between the two, that volcano would be known as a hazard only. If, however, there's our volcano, and now let's say there was an overlap. So can you see that? We've now got an overlap right there between the volcano and the population. So once we have an overlap and at least one person is impacted by that volcano, the natural hazard of that volcano is then called a disaster. Okay. And the last thing we're going to look at in this video, if I should move the camera down a bit, is the different factors which can increase the risk of these seven natural hazards. So the factors which can increase the risk of these natural hazards, which I've spoke about. So the first one is urbanization. So obviously urbanization is the growth of large city landscapes. There's my city, there it is. 
lots of them around. Now, in large urban areas, we're going to have an increase in population. And the word that we would use here is the population is normally more densely populated. So there's more people living within a smaller area. Now, of course, that means these areas are more prone to hazards such as earthquakes or natural storms, because obviously more people can be impacted because more people are more closely living together. So urbanization is our first factor. Our second factor, we speak about this quite a bit um, within the AQA specification. Our second factor is poverty. And a perfect example of this is, let me draw a, there we go, there's a very poor quality drawn mountain. There's my mountain. Now, let's say down here, we have an LIC, low impact country, and we've got a large settlement down there, large city. So those are my buildings. And as we know, with any large urban settlement, especially in LICs, we always, 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 always have an increase of people moving into that city. However, the problem is, as you can see from my brilliant diagram, um, we've run out of space now to build houses and to build buildings. So what people do, especially when the population increases, is they start to build on the side of mountains. Now, of course, this is dangerous, really dangerous, because all it takes maybe is a large storm or an earthquake, which can both cause the side of that mountain to slide down in the form of a landslide. OK, and obviously, I'm sure most of you have made the link. There's a close link already between poverty and our first factor of urbanisation. OK, now, factor number three. Is CC climate change. Now, of course, as the world is becoming warmer due to climate change, there are some parts of our planet I draw the world between 15 and 5 degrees north and south of the equator, which of course is the location of tropical storms forming. There has been an increase in intensity and an increase in frequency of large tropical storms. So anyone living within that region of the world, especially in an LIC, especially along coastal areas, Southeast Asia would be a perfect example. They're going to be more at risk of the intensity, increased intensity and increased frequency of large tropical storms. Also, not forgetting, if an area of the world, especially coastal, is low lying, there we go, so there's our sea. Due to sea level rise, if the sea levels begin to rise, land is then going to become flooded. Bangladesh is another very good example of that. And another um, link to climate change is in some areas of the world, especially within Northern Africa, there is a lack of rain known as drought, which leads to desertification, which leads to crops not growing, therefore leading to famine and death. So climate change has a lot of links to increasing natural hazards. So tropical storms, sea level rise leading to flooding and especially drought. And a fourth one is factors such as farming or agriculture. Now, 
to grow crops, ideally, we want land to be flat and not steep. So in areas such as Bangladesh, people are farming on flat floodplains, which of course are at risk of flooding due to the gradient of the land around the river. So there you have it, ladies and gents. Um, the four factors which increase the risk of natural hazards, you've got urbanisation, poverty, climate change and farming. So hopefully that was useful. Um, if it was useful, please do subscribe to this channel, like this video, add a positive comment down below and do check out my other videos which will help you with AQA GCC Geography. Thanks for watching.